Father, we in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we begin our Sabbath service. We continue with our study of the Articles of Faith of the True Jesus Church. So in order that we can refresh our minds, refresh our memory, and understand why it is that we are in God's true church. And why we believe what we believe. Let's turn to the back of our English hymn books, page 590. Page 590 of our English hymn books. Now we're not going to, last week we spoke about the baptism in the Holy Spirit and the necessity and the purpose of the Holy Spirit. Uh, we are not going to cover Article 6 and 7, foot washing and Holy Communion, because we have discussed that in the past many times and we will again each and every time that we have baptism or we receive Holy Communion and do the sacrament of foot washing. But today we're going to discuss Article number 8, the Sabbath day, the seventh day of the week. Saturday is a holy day, blessed and sanctified by God. It is to be observed under the Lord's grace for the commemoration of God's creation and redemption and with the hope of eternal rest. Now the Bible tells us very clearly that the Sabbath is the seventh day of the week. In the Western world, we call this day Saturday. Actually, it begins from sundown Friday night to sundown Saturday. But for the sake of, of easy explanation, we will just use the name Saturday. The, actually, the, the concept of the weekly cycle comes from the first week in history, which was the creation week, which consisted of seven days, including the day of rest. God set apart, God sanctified, God made holy the last day of every week as a day of rest, a day of remembrance, a day that we are to keep holy. Now I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about today about uh, how Saturday became, or was changed from, the day of worship was changed from Saturday to Sunday. Now, I'm not going to get into that discussion a lot. Uh, if we want to, we can have that discussion this afternoon. You can ask as many questions as you would like and I'd be more than happy to try to answer them. But I think most of us understand that the seventh day week is the true Sabbath day, otherwise we wouldn't be here, right? So we can discuss in more detail the history of the Sabbath this afternoon if you would like. Because from the time of the forefathers, the Israelites had acknowledged the Saturday, sundown Friday to sundown Saturday is the Sabbath day. From the earliest days of history to the present day, the Jewish people still keep the Sabbath day. The Lord Jesus himself even kept the seventh day Sabbath and so did his disciples. God never commanded us. God never commanded us to keep Sunday as our day of worship. It is a man-made day of worship. It was the Roman Emperor Constantine who officially changed the day of rest in 321 AD from Saturday to Sunday. So today it has become very widespread tradition in, Christi in Christianity to observe Sunday because they call it the Lord's Day, the day that he resurrected. But since God did not change the Sabbath day, it, that it was man who changed the Sabbath day, we should still keep the Sabbath on Saturday. Again, from sundown to sundown. This, the seventh day, rather than on Sunday, which is the first day of the week. Our Lord Jesus Christ did not do away with the Sabbath day. And being one of the Ten Commandments that was written in stone by God's own finger, it is still a day that we should observe, that Christians, all Christians, must observe. Let's go to uh, Exodus chapter 20. Exodus 20, verse 8. We 
remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Verse 9, six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work. You, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Blessed are those who hold true to God's commandments. We're going to talk today and focus today on the seven purposes for the Sabbath day. First the purpose is that it is a day of rest. Can you imagine having to work around the clock seven days a week for your entire life without resting? Some of you may be doing that already. I know many who are, uh, some of you are in the restaurant business, you feel like you're working seven days a week, 12, 14 hours a day, maybe more. When I was a young, young kid, a junior in high school, lived in Newport Ritchie. In the summertime, I worked on a shrimp boat and the shrimp boats we used to go out in the evenings. So we would get up, <coughs> I would wake up around 1.30, 2 o'clock, have something to eat. And then by 4 o'clock I had to get on my bicycle and I was riding my bicycle on Highway 19, if you can imagine that, on Highway 19 from Newport Ritchie to Tarpon Springs. And there I would get to the fishing docks and join the, the, the shrimp boat crew and we would head out to sea to the Gulf of Mexico. We would stay out there all night long. And I would pull in the nets and help pull in the nets and pull the shrimp out and pick out the shrimp, sort, every, sort all the, the, the fish out of the nets and, and, and keep the shrimp. And did this day in and day out. Seven days a week. I made good money. For me, it was good money. I made three dollars and twenty-five cents an hour, which was the which was double the minimum wage. But then, I, you know, I, I would go home and I was so exhausted, so tired, just fall into bed, and then wake up, have something to eat. Watch a little TV maybe, and then go back out again. Did this day in and day out. Then I got to thinking, how can I do this for my whole life? There was no way that I could work this many days in a row. But then I started thinking about the, the, the people who did this for a living. The men that I was working with, that was their way of living. That was how they supported their families. And I felt how poor they are. The physically, emotionally, that they were just so drained. Life would be very, very difficult, not to mention very physically grueling, if we had to do this day in and day out. We need rest physically. We need rest every, t every so often. And that is why we go to bed at night. That is why we take weekends off. That is why we go on vacations. Even God rested after creating the universe. Let's look at Genesis chapter 2, verse 2. Genesis 2, verse 2. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. You see, God does not need to rest the same way that human beings do, uh, because he is almighty because he's all, all powerful. He never gets tired. But it, out of his care, out of his concern, out of his love for his creatures, he rested and instituted a weekly cycle of rest using the seven day creation as the prototype. God has set aside the last day of every week for us to rest from our weekly routines. And he commands us, he commands the human race to keep the Sabbath day as a special day of rest. 
Let's turn to Deuteronomy chapter 5. Deuteronomy 5. Verses 13 and 14. Again, six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. See, our Creator loves us and knows that we need to be refreshed after six days of hard work. He doesn't want us to be, to see, He doesn't want to see anyone who is overworked. The Lord Jesus tells us what God had in mind when He created and He set aside the seventh day. The Sabbath day. Let's go to Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2, verse 27. No one can enter a strong man's house. I'm sorry. Mark chapter 2, verse 27. And he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore the Son of Man is also Lord of the Sabbath. He made Sabbath for man. For us. He didn't make it just for the Jewish people, as many people believe. The major, one of the major arguments in Christianity today for, for us not having to observe the Sabbath was that he, oh, he, just, he created the Sabbath for the Jewish people. He commanded the Jewish people. He didn't command us. But the Sabbath, we see from the Lord Jesus, the Sabbath was made for man. The Sabbath was instituted, was created even before there was Gentile or there was Jew or there was Greek or what, there was other nationalities. There was only mankind at the time of God creating the Sabbath and, set, and setting aside the Sabbath. Second purpose is it is a day of dedication to the Lord. Unlike the other six days of the week, God made the Sabbath day a very sacred day. It is as if God put his own signature on this day, calling it his day. We saw in, in verse 28. Therefore the Son of Man is also Lord of the Sabbath. It is the Lord's day. In Genesis 2, verse 3, it says that God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because in it God rested from all his work, which he had done in creation. God commands his people to remember the Sabbath and calls it this a day of rest. A Sabbath not for our, unto ourselves. It is a day of rest for ourselves, but it is a Sabbath unto the Lord God. See, while God made the Sabbath for man, we also have an obligation to God to set this day aside as the Lord's day. We are to rest on this day, just as God did. Cease our work. Cease our labors. And honor this day as a day of honoring God. Because the Sabbath belongs to the Lord our God, we must keep this special day for Him. Doing what He wants us to do, not what we want to do. See, God Himself, He instructs us in the right way on how to observe the Sabbath. Let's turn to Isaiah 58. Isaiah 58. Verse 13. If you turn away your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy day of the Lord honorable, and shall honor him, not doing your own ways, nor finding your own pleasure, nor speaking your own words. Verse 14. Then you shall delight yourself in the Lord, and I will cause you to ride on the high hills of the earth and feed with the, feed with the heritage of Jacob your father, the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Sounds like a lot of rules, really, doesn't it? But it is not really. It is a day of delight. If we call it a day of delight, if we look forward to this day as being a, a delightful day, a joyful day, by following God's commandment, we can think about how great and how loving God is. How special we are in His sight. 
We can make every Sabbath meaningful to us if we learn to put aside our own priorities, put aside our own pleasures, and renew our commitment to the Lord God. So, why not look at the Sabbath as spending quality time with our Father? I think all of us, when we were children, we have memories of the best times with our mother or father being the time where they would take us into their arms. We would crawl up into their lap, they would take us in their arms, and they would talk to us, they would read stories to us, sing to us, tell us how much they love us, and just hold us. Sometimes we would fall asleep in their, in their laps, in their arms. These are the best memories, aren't they? It's the same with God. The Sabbath day is a day that we come to remember Him, to dedicate the day to Him. To seek rest, but to also spend that time with our Father. The third purpose is it is a day of remembrance. On the Sabbath day, we are to remember God's mighty work of creation, as well as that He made the seventh day holy. So this weekly day of rest is a time for us to remember where we came from, our origin. We are from God. He made us to be like Him. It is a day of remembering that we are from God. God created us and we are to be like Him. So with this in mind, we can live another, li uh, another week with obedience to God in our hearts. When God commanded the Israelites to keep the Sabbath day, God also asked the people to remember how God delivered them from the slavery in Egypt. Let's look at Deuteronomy 5. Deuteronomy 5, verse 15. And remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God brought you out from there by a mighty hand and by an outstretched arm. Therefore the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. See, likewise, God has also delivered us, the believers, His children, from the sinful lifestyle under which we were bound. Satan had us as uh, captive, as prisoners in a sinful life. But God has set us free. The Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins to set us free from that bondage so that we can be free from sin, so that we can have eternal life in the heavenly kingdom. And we can win victory over Satan. The Sabbath day is a day to remember that we were once slaves to sin. We were kept under bondage but now we are made free. Let's turn to uh, Ezekiel chapter 20. Ezekiel chapter 20 verse 12. Moreover, I also gave them my Sabbaths to be assigned between them and me that they might know that I am the Lord who sanctifies them. You see, the Sabbath is God's way of telling us how special we are, that we are His people. We belong to Him. So it is a day of remembrance. Remembering who we are, who God is. The fourth day, the fourth purpose is a day of worship. In our busy schedules, we don't have a lot of time to spend real, quiet, quality time in communion with God. So the Sabbath is a perfect time for coming before the presence of God. Along with all of God, God, God's other people. You know, we work hard every day 
in school, in jobs, in business, taking care of our families. But God has provided us with a perfect opportunity to be able to assemble together and encourage each other, lift each other up. Every one of us, sometime in our life, we face a difficulty. Maybe it's family, maybe it's school, maybe it's business, work, health, finances, whatever it may be. And this is a time that we come together to worship him. Our Lord Jesus himself also set an example of keeping the, the Sabbath day. Let's turn to Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4, verse 16. Luke 4, verse 16. So he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. Now the synagogue was a place of assembly, a place of worship. It was the Lord's custom to join them in the synagogue every Sabbath. for worship. The Lord's disciples also attended the Sabbath worship regularly. Paul also did the same. Let's turn to Acts chapter 17. Acts 17 verse 2. Then Paul, as his custom was, went into them, and for three Sabbaths reasoned with them from the scriptures. Chapter 18, verse 4. And he reasoned in a synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded both Jews and Greek. Let's look at uh, Acts 13, verse 42. So when the Jews went out of the synagogue, the Gentiles begged that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. Now when the congregation had broken up, many of the Jews and devout proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who speaking them persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. Verse 44. On the next Sabbath, almost the whole city came together to hear the word of God. You know, we can also, we also have a way of worship is, is to have, to come together for prayer on this day. When Paul and the other missionaries they would arrive at a place where there was no synagogue then they would join together with wherever there was a prayer meeting. Let's look at Acts 16 verse 13. <coughs> Acts 16 verse 13. And on the Sabbath day we went out of the city to the riverside where prayer was customarily made and we sat down and spoke to the women who met there. Prayer is a form of worship. And it is a, uh, and it's a form of assembly that brings us together and brings us closer to God spiritually. Just like on the day of Pentecost we spoke about a couple weeks ago. The, the 120 were gathered together in the upstairs, upstairs room with one mind and one accord in prayer and supplication to the Lord when the Holy Spirit came upon them. So prayer, we're, a, Sabbath is a day of worship. It is a day we come together, we pray, we worship, and we give thanks to God. Fifth purpose is a day of service. The Lord Jesus, as well as his disciples, used the Sabbath day to perform good deeds. The Lord once healed a sick man on the Sabbath. On another Sabbath day, he healed a crippled woman. He wanted to show and tell people that God can provide rest from sickness and pain. He demonstrated the real purpose for the Sabbath. He didn't abolish it. He said it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. Let's look at Matthew 12, verse 12. Matthew 12, verse 12. Of how much more value then is a man than a sheep Therefore, it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath.
as we gather and worship, we can share God's word with one another. This is an excellent way to do a deed of kindness. We come together, we talk to each other, we share our burdens with each other. And encourage each other, lift each other up and do good. Pray for each other. Help each other, love each other. We can find strength, we can find guidance in life through mutual edification with God's word. We can also pray for the sick and for those who are still under the bondage of sin so that God may release them and save them. We may have family members, friends who are still under the bondage of sin, who still have not accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. We come together on the Sabbath day. We share our burdens with each other. We pray for those family members. We pray for those friends. We share testimonies and teachings on how to help bring them to Christ. The sixth day. The sixth purpose is a day of blessing. In Genesis chapter 2 verse 3 we read that God blessed the seventh day. The Sabbath is a day of blessing. We may receive blessings every week when we keep the Sabbath day. In the Bible, in, in Luke chapter 13, verse, verse 10, there's a story about a crippled woman who, had a, uh, who was doubled over with a bad back. When she came to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, Jesus was preaching. And she was in the back of the room. Jesus saw her. He sensed she was there, and he, and he said, Daughter, come forward. And then when she came forward, he said, Your faith has made you well. And immediately her back straightened. If that woman had chose that day to go to the market instead of keeping the Sabbath, if she had chose to go visit her family in another town instead of keeping the Sabbath, if she had chosen to do some things for her own pleasure instead of observing the Sabbath, she would have missed out on the greatest blessing that God gave her. We never know when we walk in through these doors what blessing God will bestow upon us. And the day that we choose to stay away could be the day that God had chose to bless you and you miss out on that blessing. When the Israelites were staying in the wilderness, God gave them twice the amount of food from heaven every sixth day so that they would not need to work for food on the Sabbath day. Today, many who put aside their own work to keep the Sabbath testify that God has indeed blessed them much more than they expected. I received an email yesterday requesting prayer for a Seventh-day Adventist minister who is going to be going before Congress, some sort of uh, Senate hearing, <coughs> to argue for the rights of Sabbath keepers that employers should not require or discriminate against those who need to keep the Sabbath. You know, many brothers and sisters around the country, even around the world, at times they were put into, they had to uh, seek employment. And they took positions where they had to work on the Sabbath. But when they stood up and said, I can't, they said, you either work or you're fired. And you know what? Those that chose to take the firing, God provided them with a better job. 
God is wanting to bless us. We know of many testimonies. The rest, uh, the, in the UK, the restaurant owners in the UK closing their business on the Sabbath, the busiest day, so that they can observe the Sabbath day. And their business is in, in, increased and increased and increased because they chose to observe the Sabbath. The Lord made a promise to those who keep the Sabbath. Let's turn to Isaiah 58. Isaiah 58, verse 14. Then you shall delight yourself in the Lord, and I will cause you to ride on the high hills of the earth and feed you with the heritage of Jacob your father, the mouth of the Lord has spoken. God himself, along with his love and his peace and his joy and his comfort and his strength and his glorious kingdom, will be ours forever if we observe the Sabbath day. Finally, the seventh purpose is that it is a day of hope. The Sabbath rest now points us in the rest that we will receive someday in heaven. Let's turn to Hebrews 4, verse 9 and 10. Hebrews 4. Hebrews 4, verses 9 and 10. There remains therefore a rest for the people of God, for he who has entered his rest has himself also ceased from his works as God did from his. Just as God rested from the work of creation, and just as we rest from our weekly labors, one day the believers of God will also rest in his arms. When we reach that home, we will rest from all the toils, all the sorrows, all the pain, all the sufferings of life. And we will enjoy true rest for eternity. So today, brothers and sisters, we have found that rest in our Lord Jesus Christ. By his sacrifice, he has opened the gates of heaven. Through his power, we can live like the citizens of heaven. With his assurance, we have peace amid our troubles. He will guide us all the way to that eternal rest if we always trust and obey Him. So every Sabbath is a day in which we can thank our Savior, lift up our eyes of hope to our everlasting home. So let us hope for that day of rest in heaven while we keep this day of rest on earth. Amen.